around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Claire, if this keeps up, we're going to be needing us an ark, Mr. Dillon. Well, we can't make much headway through this. We better look around for cover. I don't rightly know anybody who's settled around here. Sure would help if this prairie had a few trees to shelter a body. Yeah, if a lightning didn't hit them. Hey, look over there, Chester. Isn't that a light? Yes, sir, it sure is. Now, whose place do you suppose? I don't care whose place, as long as it has a roof on it. Come on. It's a house, all right, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but I don't see that light anymore. Oh, it seems to have gone out or something. Now, let's tie our horses around here out of the wind. All right, Jay. You ready? Let's run for it. I seen a light, Mr. Dillon. They must be playing deep in there. Or dead. Come on, open up, uh, open up. Mr. Dillon, look. What? The shutter on that window there, it's opening. Oh. I'm sorry to rust you up, but I thank you for shoulder till the storm lets up. Go away. I don't like to bother you, ma'am, but... go away. Look, I'm a U.S. Marshal on my way back to Dodge. Maybe I know your husband. Are you alone out here? It don't matter. Go away. Oh. Come on, Chester. Yeah, Mr. Young, maybe if I we... I said, come on. To... All right. I swear that ain't the unfriendliest... It's more than that, Chester. What do you mean? She's scared to death about something. Well, we better get moving before we freeze to death. All right. Doggone it, I sure did have my mouth set for a cup of coffee. Well, it might have been set for good. What? She was pointing a shotgun out of that window. Now, just listen a minute, uh, if you will. I've got a little story to tell you. Well, it's not such a little story. It's sort of a tall tale. Ever hear tell of Wind Wagon Smith? Well, according to legend, we practically owe our whole system of modern transportation to old Windwagon. Yes, sir. Before his days, folks traveled afoot, on horseback or by ox team. But Windwagon, he wasn't about to put up with that slow type of traveling, no siree. For him, 15 miles a day seemed like standing still. So he came up with a contraption that he called a prairie clipper. The clipper was a wagon without any kind of animals to pull it. It had a sail a sticking up from the middle of it, just like a ship at sea. That clipper moved along pretty good, too. When the wind was right, old Windwagon figured he could make around 70 miles in one day. First, folks all laughed at him. But when he pointed out how the country was a spreading out, and how big cities would be springing up right and left, and how people would need transportation for themselves and their goods, they began to figure that the clipper might be a pretty good idea at that. Well, to kind of kick off the clipper to a good start, Windwagon invited the United States Secretary of War and the Secretary of the Navy to go along on the maiden voyage. But disaster struck. 
The clipper got out of control. The Secretary of War rolled out of the clipper, and the Secretary of the Navy bounced into a cactus patch. But Windwagon and the clipper kept it going till they were plumb lost over the horizon. No one ever saw the clipper again. But as transportation grew in America, people all over the country told of seeing Windwagon Smith. They say he was in the pilot house of the first steamboat to sail up the Yellowstone. He held the golden spike when the first transcontinental railroad was completed. And when the first transcontinental plane roared off the runway, it was Wynn Wagon Smith, the spirit of American transportation, who waved the pilot on his way. Yes, sir. He really got around, old Wynn Wagon did. <laughs> Say, isn't it nice being citizens of a country where you can laugh and talk about things free as a breeze and write and read and worship, too? Yes, sir. Maybe you don't think about it much. But you should. So silly, Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Come on. What? Come on. Now, is that him, Jenny? Is that the man? Just a minute here. Now, speak up. Who are you? Is that the man? That's him. You can let go of her, mister. Now, what's your name? Judd Barden. Now, my woman says you was the one who was out to my place last night. I seen the horse tracks. You live north of town, just past Little Creek? That's my place. Now, I don't allow nobody coming around my woman. It was storming, Barden. I figured your place for a shelter. Well, you sure was wrong about Now, that. wait a minute. There were two of us there. Didn't she tell you that? You're the one she talked to. Well, that sure didn't do me any good. She didn't let us in. Did you, Miss Barton? No. I didn't let no. her... Well, I'll tell you... Now, you wait a minute, talk. Barton. You ever come out there again, Marshal, I'll kill you. Your badge won't do you no good. I'll kill you sure. I've moved two times now just to keep men away from my woman. I ain't aiming to move again. Get out of here, Burton. Now, I warned you. Go on. Get out of here. All right, come along, Jenny. Another beer, Matt? Uh, no, thanks, Kitty. I think I'll just sit here for a while. I hear you got your feet wet the other night. Yeah. What, Chester, tell you? Yeah, he was in here, sneezing earlier today. <laughs> I couldn't get him to take his wet boots off after we got back. Why not? Oh, he said he'd better keep his feet on them to keep them from shrinking. <laughs> his feet? <laughs> Next time, I'll let Chester tell his own story. Mr. Dillon? Evening, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. See what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dillon, there's a lady outside claims she has to see you. Oh? Who is she? I don't know. She says somebody told her you was here, and she don't rightly feel she ought to come into a saloon. Of course not. Oh, well, no. Well, I better go see what she wants. Uh... I'll see you later, Kitty. All right, man. Marshal Dillon. Huh? Uh, Miss Barton. Jenny, Marshal. Just Jenny. Well, you wanted to see me? I had to see you. you got to help me, Marshal. Oh? Where's your husband? He's back at the place. Dead drunk. I don't know how I'd have stood it if he didn't drink himself into a stupor ever once and so often. Well, what is it you want me to do, Miss Barton? Jenny. Well, all right. Jenny, well, what can I do? Hide me, Marshal. Please, hide me. I gotta be hit by the time it comes to. Well, I'd sure like to help you, Jenny, but I can't do that. Marshal, I can't go back to him. Well, the law can't come between a man and his wife, Jenny. You don't understand. I gotta have help. I, I... Hey. 
Uh, Jenny. She fainted, Chester. You go find Doc. I'll carry her on up to his office. There we are now. You, you just lie there quietly for a little while. That's it. You'll be all right. Now I'll be back shortly. Doc? That's uh, a messy business. Well, what's the matter with her? Is she going to be all right? I suppose so. Well, she'll be all right this time. But she can't go through this many more times. Not if she wants to live. I don't understand. What do you mean? I mean that she's been beaten, Matt. Savagely and often. And I'll tell you something else, too. It's like signing her death warrant to send her back to that husband of hers. Yeah, I guess you're right. I know I'm right. By all that's holy, a man to do a thing like that ought to be strung up. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be all right to move her? Uh, yes, she can move. Won't be too comfortable for her, but she can move. Uh, good, and I'll take her over to Kitty's till I can fix it so that this won't happen again. <laughs> Get it all fixed up, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester, I just left her up in Kitty's room. Doc gave her a powder so that she'd sleep through the night. Oh, my, that poor lady. What kind of a man would do a thing like that? I don't know. God, it looks like we're going to get to know him better real soon. Is that him? Dillon! Yeah. Oh, where is she, Dillon? Where you got her? You come to give her another beating? She's my woman. I come for her. I haven't got her, pardon. Oh, you got her, all right. You got her. You're the only one she ever run off to. Now you give her back, Marshal. I'll kill you. Now you listen to me, Barton. I haven't got her. I don't care much whether you believe me or not, but I haven't got her. I don't believe But if believe I did you. have her, I wouldn't turn her over to you. You nearly killed her as it is. That's my business. I'm making it my business. I don't know what kind of a man you think you are, beating a woman like that, and I don't care, but my job is to protect people from the likes of you. Well, I'm going to find her, Dylan. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to kill you. You get out of Dodge, Barton. Now. You just climb on that horse of yours and head on out. I'll be back, Dylan. And he will be back, too, Mr. Dillon. He's too all fired me not to. Yeah, I know. But right now I'm playing for time. How's that, Mr. Dillon? Well, we got to get Jenny out of here. Well, you got a plan? No, not yet. But I better come up with something by morning. Because Barton's not going to stay put very long. She's sleeping all right now. But it took her a long time to settle down. Too scared, huh? Oh, scared to death. But that's not all. There's something else bothering her, Matt. Something uh-huh. she doesn't want to talk about. Oh, what is it? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. But she acts sort of ashamed about something. She's got nothing to be ashamed about. Well, of course not. Anyway, she's pretty desperate to get out of Dodge. Yeah. She, uh... Mention any place that she could go? Well, she talked about her brother. Oh? He said he'd always take her in, no matter what. Oh, where does he live, you know? Yeah, north of here. Off the stage line someplace. 30, 40 miles away, I think. Well, 
Barton. That's the thing to do, then. But, Matt, the stage is one thing Barton's sure to watch. Can you get her ready in the morning? Oh, sure, but isn't that risky? She took a chance coming here, Kitty. She'll have to take a chance getting to her brother. Green Mountain. In the United States, Vermont. Uh, Vermont means Green Mountain. The similarity is purely intentional, for the mountainous state of Vermont was originally settled by the French. There is other evidence, too, of the early French settlers, like Vergennes, the one time capital named for the French Minister of Foreign Affairs. But despite its French ancestry, Vermont is American through and through, from Ethan Allen and the furniture which is made today bearing his name to Steamtown, USA, near Bellows Falls. From St. Albans, leading producer of an all-American commodity, maple syrup, to a little country store in Weston. The fresh fragrance of red clover, the granite beneath its hills characteristic of its people. The well-known Vermont cussedness or independence. Admiral George Dewey and Calvin Coolidge. All things typically American, typically Vermont. <laughs> Driver, how, how soon are we leaving? Any minute now, ma'am. Oh, good. That's good. Oh, will you please watch the way you handle that case? Sure thing, ma'am. You've got it upside down. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Well, now we'll fix that, and I'll set it right up there on top. No, no. I, I, I want it in the stage with me. Do you hear? Well, I guess that'll be all right, ma'am. Sure not full up. Thank you, driver. Oh, hello, Jim. Oh, hello there, Chester. Uh, everything all right? I mean, is there oh, everything... Oh, sure, Chester. There's nothing to worry about this trip. I only got one passenger. Oh, well, that's good. Unless this gent's figuring on riding with us, too. You take in the stage, mister. I'll let you know. Uh, well, you better uh, make up your mind, because I'm he... fixing to leave as soon as I sent you on these yeah, bags. Jim, he... wait till I get around the other side for a minute, Chester. I want to uh, tie off this Wait, Jim, I have to... Here, you. Uh, yeah? Didn't you the fellow that I seen with, with Marshall last night? Yeah, well, you, you, you might have saw me with yeah. him. I, I'm... Why are you so interested in this stage? Yeah, well, I... Uh, I was just down to see Jim for a minute. We're old friends. Now, what was it, Chester? Uh, nothing, Jim, I guess. I, 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 I guess I said just about all I had to say before. Well, I, I should certainly think so. I don't know how many times you have to tell me. Jim, just, just a minute. Jim. I'll make the stop, all right, oh, just Jim, like you said. Jim, now, for heaven's sake. You want to make a special stop? Well, um, mister, I don't know. Well, now, that's interesting, ain't it? I think I'll just ride along with you after all. Uh, you ain't got a ticket. This gun is all the ticket I need. Oh, why? Right. Climb on up there now. Well, now... Go on! Yeah. Go on. And I'm going to ride right with you. Now, listen, mister. Oh, I... shut up. I'll take that whip. Well, who was that man? What in the world was he doing? I can't take time to explain it to you now, ma'am. i got to but... get moving. <laughs> When we get there, Jenna, you climb out and onto the stage as fast as you can, huh? I'll try, Marshal. I'll watch until you've gotten safely away. I sure am beholden to you for what you're doing. That's all right. Everybody needs a little help once in a while. Now, there's the stage road. We'll pull over into these cottonwoods and wait. Ah. Ah. Well, ought to be coming along any time, huh? I hope so. I, I just assumed this was all behind me. Oh, you're doing fine. 
Lots of things I'm thinking I ain't saying, Marshal. I need to say anything. One thing I'd like you to know, Special. It wasn't true about me and the mother men, Marshal. It never was true. It was just Judd's crazy way of looking at things. Any man I saw, he suspicioned. He had a... a crazy way. Yeah, well, it's about the kindest thing you could say about him. Maybe I deserved it. I can't help thinking maybe it was all due me. Uh, here comes the stage, Jenny. It's Judd. What? It's Judd, Marshal. Up by the driver. Oh, get down in the wagon bed and stay down. Jenny, I've seen you. I've seen you. I know you've got it right there in that wagon, Marshal. And now I'm going to kill you. Don't do it. But no! Marshal? Well? Is he dead? Yeah, Jim, he's dead. He, he was crazy, Marshal. Plum crazy. Yeah, he was. I'm sorry I had to kill him, Jenny. I don't think anything short of that would have stopped him, Marshal. He was full of hate. You must have seen something in him once, though. To marry him. No, Marshal. Judd never married me. He just cleaned me. Well, why didn't you speak up, Jenny? Folks could have helped you knowing that and saved you a lot of hurt. It was a shame. I couldn't face the shame of telling folks I was living that way. It was easier taking the beatings? Yes, Marshal, it was. A woman needs to be thought of as respectable. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.